Kubernetes is certainly not going to ever to take over 100% of the workloads. It's not widely used. And that sounds strange, right? But I'm talking about percentage of workloads, right? Majority of things are not in Kubernetes. But majority of investment is. And that's what makes those tools interesting, right? This is DevOps Paradox, episode number 183. Victor's review of KubeCon 2022. Detroit. Welcome to DevOps Paradox. This is a podcast about random stuff in which we, Darren and Victor, pretend we know what we're talking about. Most of the time, we mask our ignorance by putting the word DevOps everywhere we can and mix it with random buzzwords like Kubernetes, serverless, CICD, team productivity, islands of happiness, and other fancy expressions that make us sound like we know what we're doing. Occasionally, we invite guests who do know something, but we do not do that often since they might make us look incompetent. The truth is out there, and there is no way we are going to find it. P.S. It's Darren reading this text and feeling embarrassed that Victor made me do it. Here are your hosts, Darren Pope and Victor Farson. Victor is hours out of KubeCon. Six days of KubeCon. Six very intensive days. I'm going to crash probably tomorrow when I reach the airplane and not wake up for five days. Sounds like that. Yeah, but you'll be able to land and just go to sleep. Actually, you'll be able to get on the plane and go go to sleep, which will be the most important. Yeah, and then wake up, take a taxi, and go to sleep again. Now, obviously, tomorrow would be if you're listening to this Thursday, but that's not true. What we're doing is we're recording on Friday. He just got back to the hotel room. So Victor, where do you want to start with this? Where do you want to start about your review on KubeCon 2022 in a... You you pick. You want uh, good, uh, good things or bad things first? Let's do good things first. There is that continuous sensation, very positive sensation of cloud-native tooling that work together so some kind of community feeling even though i'm speaking now more from the perspective of vendors i think that everybody realized that you know if you want to succeed you need to play nice with everybody else rather than try to build some isolated ecosystem and that's extremely positive and that's that's the theme that's probably my takeaway from from kubecon the ecosystem is growing and most projects are very concerned how to interoperate with each other rather than how to be all encompassing something. Was that different at EU a few months ago? No, no, it wasn't different. I think that we are continuing down that route and solidifying that direction or route, right? The major difference, I think, I felt more engagement in Valencia than than in Detroit, as if there was more interest in the general audience, you know, buzzing around and kind of, what is this? What is this? Right? I felt that more in Valencia. Now I'm jumping into negative things uh, without planning though, but... That's okay. It's That's not super negative. That's just, I mean, that could have been Valencia and it was summertime and here... Could be weather, it could be city, it could be maybe kind of more accessible bars the day before. I don't know. Kind of, well, I'm, so I'm not even trying to speculate why. I mean, maybe that might not even be correct. It's just a feeling, but... It just felt different. Uh, it just felt yeah. different. Okay. All right. So trying to interop is a plus, and that, fe- that feeling is growing more and more. Oh, yeah. Anything else that was good or interesting? What I'm going to say is biased, very... Uh, there were projects that were being mentioned over and over and over and over and over again in talks that have not not coming from people from those projects. That's like crossplane. Again, I'm biased, but go through the schedule and then check the name, right? How many times appears. Very strong focus on uh, Argo and Flux, GitOps in general. Many talks that were not really about GitOps use it in a background so that that's becoming i mean that is huge undeniably and uh caverno keeps growing at a faster rate than i predicted let's say right i I see it everywhere it's becoming the de facto standard for 
policies in Kubernetes. But I think that's the key point there in Kubernetes. That's where you live 99% of your time. Yes. You know, kind of uh, Kubernetes is certainly not going to ever to take over 100% of the workloads. It's not widely used. And that sounds strange, right? But I'm talking about percentage of workloads, right? Majority of things are not in Kubernetes. But majority of, the, of investment is. And that's what makes those tools interesting, right? Because, yes, 90% of your stuff is going to be mainframe or bare metal or VMs, maybe Docker containers, right? But to me, it's not about those percentages, right? It's about where does a company invest their effort and money and, and everything else, right? And that goes in big part in, into Kubernetes, right? And that's what makes solutions like a which are Kubernetes only, even though you need policies for way beyond Kubernetes, still very interesting, right? Because that's the area where pe that I feel companies are more inclined to put effort into modernization or whatever that that's called today, right? How did you said the feeling between Valencia and Detroit was a little bit different? Do you feel like there were more people? In Detroit than Valencia? It looks like there were more in Valencia, but that can easily be deceiving, you know, because different size of the venue, more space in the expo area can easily give you the feeling that there are less people. But I spent a lot of time with different booths, with different projects, and they all had the same feeling that the level of interaction is, is much lower. And that can be attributed to many things, right? One theory could be that the crowd in Detroit is more familiar maybe with Kubernetes and uh, cloud native this or that, and then they are they're not rushing into uh, conversations with project people kind of what is this right maybe maybe more people know what that those things are right and then they are interacting less or any other number of reasons so it's not necessarily I'm not saying it even as a bad thing just Less and less feeling of of elevated energy. Let's say. How was the conference food? Uh, it looked bad, <laughs> and and I, yeah. So you know, when it looks when something doesn't look tempting to me, I don't try it. So it might have been great, but it didn't look good. Isn't that true for most conference food? Yeah, you know, I feel that conference food should be better off to be trash food or fast food than, than kind of trying to give you real food that, that is, I, I would feel better with, with, with the pizza, for example, than some mishmash that looks like something random that you don't want to taste, right? I know. But see, if people would have planned for conference food, and we're trying something new today, if you haven't figured this out, <laughs> if you'd prepared and brought a bottle of hot sauce with you, that can make anything taste good. Oh, yeah. I actually, I, I'll, I always get disappointed when there is no hot sauce wherever I am. I'm a anti, anti Spanish. Spaniards don't like hot sauces. I cannot live without it. Yeah, but you're Serbian. So it sort of goes with. But there you go. We have a sponsor today, and that sponsor is Barbaro Moho. You're thinking, what is. Wait, okay. Wait, guys, you're doing an ad. Yes, we're doing an ad. Barbaro Moho. It's an artisanal, small batch, Cuban hot sauce. We're not talking about any normal hot sauce. We're not talking Texas hot sauce. We're, we're talking Cuban hot sauce. We're talking about the real stuff. It's made in Miami, Florida. The founders are Mario and Ali Cruz, and they started making hot sauce in their home. And all of a sudden, friends and family tasted it. It's like, look, you got to make us some hot sauce. And that's what they did. My wife, she loves hot sauces. If, it's, if she's not crying, it wasn't done right. <laughs> The green one is good. It's it's nice, even goes good on eggs, goes good on everything else. The habanero one, be ready to cry. You want to get some of this? Now, unfortunately, this is just going to be for our people listening in the United States. If you go to barbaromoho.com and you look down in the show notes, there's a link that's going to save you 25%, but it, you don't have to click on the link when you go to check out. The code is DevOps25. That's DevOps25. So we were talking about food, conference food. Okay, we all guarantee that conference food, because number one, they can't bring it in because you're in a venue and they're going to make you use their caterers. No good. But you're getting ready to go out in just a few moments. Again, this is Friday. 
and you're getting ready to go have Detroit pizza. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Something different. We've talked about it. I've been building it up. Now, again, it's not New York. It's not Chicago pizza, but it's Detroit pizza. It's just different. So just understand it is bread with sauce and meat. If you want meat, you can get it vegetarian if you want. So that's going to be a good part of your day. And also, this is you have no more booths to go into, which is a very good thing. Just food and drink. Exactly. And sleep, or at least a nap. Maybe not sleep. Those are good things. What are some bad things of the week? Because not every conference is going to be joy, joy, happy, happy every little bit along the way. My main negative point is, uh, so I attended some collocated events. Uh, Speak on collocated events, right? So I don't pay for the... So define co-located event for this. So those are uh, two days before the main day of KubeCon. So in this case, uh, Monday, Tuesday, we co-located events. And that's uh, some of those events are uh, done by sponsors or commercial entities that decide what, what they want to do and how they want to do. I don't care about those, but many of those sessions are open source projects, you know, from CNCF Foundation. For example, I attended one for Knative. And the price of the ticket was 400 bucks extra. And none of that money goes to the project, as far as I know, right? So it's, uh, it sounded a bit too much, to be honest. That, that's probably something that, that was standard a long time ago. It just I never got informed about prices of those things. So to me, that sounded a bit too much. So your negative on that was... In the, in the pre-events that appeared to be, what's the right word Completely to say? community-driven kind of right. volunteers, open source project, like native, right? No sales pitch, nothing, nothing, nothing. Think of it as a meetup. Yeah. And 400 to me sounds like too much. Too much. Now, if they would have said 75 for the day and it was going to the project or something, even if it doesn't, because I understand that there are some expenses for the venue, what's not right? 100 sounds like a, anything up to 100 to me sounds good. Maybe even welcome, because maybe you want to, even if you don't need to charge anything, maybe you want to charge anything so that you know that the person is likely coming, really, instead of 1,000 people trying to get in and then you're rejecting them and then people don't show up. So I'm not, I'm not against charging. It just sounded a bit too much for 100. So that was a negative. Yeah. What else was a negative? We, t- we joked about the food. That's always a negative. That's, that's just a given. Exactly. That's, nothing else. We had one cold day, which is not really negative because I expected all days to be very cold and it was nice weather. So that was good instead of being negative. Uh, not, nothing really else struck me as special except yeah, I bet everything worked really. Sessions were great. Expo area where I tend to hang, trying to find friends was great. Everything is good, really. You said the sessions were great. You actually went to some sessions? Yes, I did went to go to a couple of sessions. So I cannot say all sessions were great, but I went to a couple and uh, they were good. Can you talk about any of those sessions or what you went to go see that you liked, that you wanted to see? Yeah, I mean, I, I went more, not that much to discover new stuff, but more because people who were speaking uh, are people I wanted to hang out uh, with and things like that. So it, it was more of, uh, you know, Argo, Flux, Caverno, the tools that I mentioned already, which you couldn't have avoided almost hardly uh, anyways. So I, I didn't really hear anything special, but it was well executed. You know, I'm I'm already deep into many of the subjects of crossplane. So I'm not a good one to uh, say how interesting or uninteresting that is. I, I know much of that stuff. But the reception, you know, the number of questions coming afterwards and, and the way how speakers executed was really good. I was looking through my notes and I was trying to find if we've released the episode yet with who I'm thinking. And I don't think we have. Or I maybe we have. I've lost track. Ground cover. That was the EBPF stuff. I think we have. Oh, there it is. Yes, that was Shahar, and that was back at episode 178. So, good. All right, I just wanted to make sure I wasn't talking about something that we hadn't released yet. Actually, good that you mentioned. Route cover is one of the projects that I was, I went through while I was, I, I use 
like you can time time also to, to to see what people are doing and how it works and stuff like that. And ground cover is one of the projects that I have in my notes as if this looks pretty amazing. That's it, just amazing. Amazing, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I still need to go much deeper into it to to give you know kind of, but uh, eBPF is definitely a thing. It's it's growing exponentially. I like the ideas behind it, and Ground Cover is one of those projects that is leveraging it very successfully. I would say. Do you think that was one of the big themes of Detroit? Was eBPF? Yes, but not directly sneaking in, right? So I haven't seen or seen or heard, and again, I haven't been to all the sessions, and I haven't spoken with absolute everybody, but I haven't seen much of eBPF kind of directly kind of, hey, this is eBPF, but more indirectly, right? Hey, look at this cool project is doing this and that. And by the way, it's eBPF behind it, right? So it's almost as if there is no need to be so explicit about eBPF before talking about anything else. What was the show floor like? The exhibitor hall, I guess, is the other way to say it. Big with a lot of space. That's probably what gave me the feeling as, as if there is less people than in Valencia. So a lot of space, big, big, big room, not crowded, which I appreciate. Did anybody notice you on the floor other than people that knew you? Like people like, hey, there's Victor. I know him from fill in the blank. Yeah, yeah, the, the, a lot of people. I hanged, hanged out with a lot of people. Uh, some of them I knew from before. Uh, many others I met for the first time. When you were talking to other people, what were they talking about? Were there was there a common theme from other people? It was like I'm here to see this, or were they just hanging out? That's hard to say because uh, people I meet associate me with certain things, right? So the responses I get might be biased. People very often when they when they meet me, they speak about Crossplane, they speak about GitHub, they know that I publish a lot of things about GitHub and so on and so forth. People know me from videos and they often discuss the things I explored that might be just a fraction of what they're really interested in. I'm just trying to think, what did I miss by not going to Detroit? Networking, hanging out. I think that that's, and everybody, I ask that a lot of people kind of like, why are you here? What are you getting out of this? And the most common answer is people, you know, hanging out with people, hanging out kind of parties just as in Valencia were a huge success. Everybody went out for the party. And I'm not now talking about getting drunk or anything like that, but more like, hey, we've been locked for years. Now this is this is for many people first opportunity to see other people beyond immediate family and neighbors and things like that. So let's assume for a moment that you had the ear of the people that were planning the next KubeCon. What would you tell them? What would I tell them? I don't know. Make it, make it less obviously commercial. Like keynotes. Uh, okay, that, that's another thing. Negative kind of. Um, just as previous uh, in Valencia, I was not very happy with first day keynotes. It's kind of like why am I? And, I, and other people told me the same kind of. Like, why am I listening to this? Kind of like what does this have to do with anything? Right. Second day, key, the day keynotes were uh, actually amazingly great right yeah if there is something to tell them kind of make it less obviously commercial i'm not saying don't make it commercial everybody needs to earn money i i'm completely there right but kind of just more subtle that's something i couldn't do for you so that's that's good uh speaking of not being subtle have i told you about this great new cuban hot sauce no is it the one with h or without h pronounced at the beginning of the without word? without h Okay. Again, again. I haven't heard about that one. I heard about the one with H. I, I don't have the H one down here, but this this is the <laughs> this is the halibo. So that's what I'm holding in my hand. You can't see it, but again, just, we'll we'll get through this really quick. I promise. Cuban hot sauce. If you want to get some, again for U.S. residents only, go to Baba Rumoho. Don't worry about it. You probably can't spell it because I can't say it. The link is down in the show notes. Click on that link. It'll automatically add 25% off at checkout. No matter what's on sale. This is the other thing. It's not just 25% off retail. If things are on sale, you get a 25% off whatever the sale price is already. BarbaroMoho.com Do you think you'll go to the next KubeCon in North America? 
Definitely. That's this time next year, Chicago. Oh, Chicago will be easier. Plus, that'll be a direct flight for you. Yeah, but it's November. <laughs> it's going to be snowing. November in, in Chicago and kind of, you know, Chicago is, is a city. Where I've been there only once for a couple of days and now I'm looking, f- I would be looking forward to exploring Chicago, you know, just exploring touristy things. Mm-hmm. But I'm not walking if it's snowing. I'm assuming it'll be downtown and it it will be miserable if it's snowing downtown. Yeah, exactly. So I'm looking forward to this Chicago, but come on, make it September. September is probably good, right? September in, in Chicago is very nice. Yeah. Yeah. August, September, October, and up until middle of October is usually pretty nice in, in Chicago. But after that, all bets are off. If it would be better time of the year, I would stay a week longer. Because I, I got so hooked on the TV series Ozark, I would go there and check it out. <laughs> you go to Ozark? I think it sounds like something <laughs> that you should visit when you're in the area or doesn't. Oh, dear. That could be a completely different podcast that we could do is talking about breaking down the episodes of Ozark, which we won't do here. <laughs> so the Victor rating for KubeCon NA 2022. What do you think? If I would set the standard by saying that pre-COVID KubeCon in, what's the city below LA? My San Diego. San Diego. If that would be 10, mm-hmm. then Valencia would be 9 or 8, and this would be 7 or 8. Okay. I don't like that trend. But it's good. It's good. Yeah, it's still good. It's still good. But now you come back to Chicago next year in November. No, no, but look, the trend <sighs> is that the previous one in LA was miserable. I haven't been oh, there. Oh, it but was. Okay. Everybody told me that it was, there was no attendee to mm. be found anywhere. All the vendors. Interesting. So the trend depends how you look at it, right? Depends how big of a time frame you take. So LA would probably be three on that scale. Mm. I haven't okay. been there, but what I gathered from other people. So a seven or eight for Detroit. That sounds pretty good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now, so you're going, you're getting ready to go have pizza. Of course, by the time you're listening to this, you've already had the pizza. So we can talk about it on the live stream on Friday. You get on a plane, you head back home and then you start it all over again. And is this the end of your schedule for travel this year? More or less? No, no, no. no, Big travel? Not even close. Oh, I thought you were close to end end of big travel right now. No, I don't know. I'm traveling already. I don't know. I have like four, five, no, four, I think, places to travel. Between now and end of year? Yes. Yeah, but you had seven places to travel in October alone. Yeah, exactly. So I'm winding <laughs> down. Yeah, that definitely. Okay. You know a great way to wind down? Cuban hot sauce. <laughs> I had to throw it in there one more time. Mario and Ali. Thanks for sponsoring this episode of DevOps Paradox. And if you're listening to this, again, barbaromoho.com. The coupon code is DevOps25. I'll save you 25% on your first order. Again, link down in the show notes. Victor, it's been a long time since it's just been me and you on the podcast. Yeah, it sounds weird. It does sound weird. So I don't know how to end this. Do we just say, that's it? Oh, we could talk about, because last week because I know when this one is really coming out. If you haven't had a chance yet to go back and listen to the episode that came out this past Wednesday with Ryan Culp on should you start a side business or not, or a side gig, I don't remember the title off the top of my head. You should go and listen to that after you finish listening to That is a great episode, man. Oh, man. We'll probably talk more about Ryan and stuff and coming up as we get into Christmas and New Year's. That was probably... I'm not going to say it's one. Of, it's it's in the top ten of episodes that we've done of all time. We're and we're now at episode 183. It, it was great. So if you haven't listened to that, go back after you finish this one and go listen to that one at episode 182. Thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you again next week. We hope this episode was helpful to you. If you want to discuss it or ask a question, please reach out to us. Our contact information and a link to the Slack workspace are at devopsparadox.com slash contact. If you subscribe through Apple Podcast, be sure to leave us a review there that helps other people discover this podcast. 
Go sign up right now at DevOpsParadox.com to receive an email whenever we drop the latest episode. Thank you for listening to DevOps Paradox.